Today I'm going to cover a topic that I don't really see a lot of people in the crypto community talking about, but it's very important because if this were to happen to any particular coin, it could lose all of its integrity, and that is a 51% attack. But first, we need to look at how transactions are verified in different systems to understand this. So in a centralized payment system like a bank, all of the transactions are verified by the bank. So if I were to send a friend of mine $100, it's the bank's job to make sure that $100 is removed from my account and then added to his. Sounds easy enough, but it can be a little bit tricky to do this right. Uh, you know, what if I try transferring $100 to two of my friends at the same time? Who's going to end up getting the money? Uh, and what if I only have $100 in my account? Are both of them going to get $100? You have to have checks in place to make sure that a transaction like that doesn't happen because that would be double spending, creating money out of thin air, and only the Federal Reserve is allowed to do that. Now, when all transactions are verified by a single entity and all of the accounts that are connected are controlled by that entity, it's a bit easier to take care of this problem. You know, even if a mistake did happen where uh, somebody was able to send $100 to two different people without it taking 200 from their account, the bank could just remove that money from whatever account it needs to and then put things back where they belong. But how could this be prevented in a decentralized network like the one that Bitcoin uses? It is the job of the miners of each individual cryptocurrency. They are the ones that are responsible for verifying transactions, whether we're talking about Bitcoin, Monero, or F, uh, all of that number crunching that the miners do with their CPUs, GPUs, and ASICs is constantly auditing the network. It's generating hashes individually to verify that transactions went down the way that people say they did. And if multiple people in different parts of the world who don't know each other are coming to the same conclusion on a transaction, then it's pretty safe to say that that transaction is legit. But what if somebody who is mining Bitcoin decided to engage in some shenanigans? What if they decided to not verify a specific transaction because they don't like the person who is receiving the Bitcoin? Or what if they tried to just create counterfeit transactions for themselves? You know, maybe uh, they're going to give some Bitcoin to somebody and then they're also going to give it to somebody else and they want neither of those to result in Bitcoin being removed for their wallet. How can the network differentiate between those false transactions and legitimate ones? You know, these networks are decentralized, so it's not like there's some judge that can just decide which one is legit. So the network is going to have to go with whichever chain of transactions is the largest, whichever one has the most transactions verified. And this is where the 51% problem comes in. So if somebody can scale up their crypto mining operation so much to the point that 51% or more of the total network hash rate is coming from that one person or that one company or organization or whatever, that means that they are mining at a faster rate than all of the other Bitcoin miners combined. So if there's any competition between this person and the rest of the miners, then they are going to win. It's just like if you had a car with an infinite gas tank and you started driving down an infinite road at 50 miles per hour, somebody who is driving at 51 miles per hour is going to catch you eventually, even if you started driving years before them. So how can this lead to shenanigans? Well, if I'm already mining faster than anybody else or everybody else, that means that I can catch up to the current blocks and then I can start creating my own blocks without announcing them to the network. So usually a miner is going to announce their block to the network as soon as they find it. But in this case, I'm essentially mining privately. I'm basically creating my own private blockchain. And meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and spend my Bitcoin on the public chain. Maybe I'll buy a Tesla. Maybe I'm going to sell some of my Bitcoin for cash or I'm going to buy some blow off of the dark web. 
And keep in mind, I still have my private blockchain that is growing faster than the public one uh, that everyone else is maintaining. But on my private blockchain, I'm not going to document any of my spending. On the public one, I'll spend like crazy. I'll buy cars and machine guns. But on my private one, I'm gonna pretend that I was diamond hands, that I never sold any Bitcoin, never flipped it into another cryptocurrency or anything like that. So then after a couple of blocks, once I'm ahead a little bit, I can announce my proof of work to the public network and it's just going to be accepted because my uh, my blockchain is longer than anyone else's. And um, you know my private blockchain, it's going to then become the consensus and it is as if I never spent those coins, but I obviously still have whatever I bought with them. Uh, there's also a way that somebody could block transactions with 51% of the network hash rate. So since I'm the fastest to verify a transaction, I can just create a block, a blacklist of Bitcoin wallets that I want to block transactions to. So I can create a rule uh, on my private blockchain to just ignore any transactions involving those wallets. And then I can publish my blockchain uh, with those rules in force to the network. And that's gonna become the consensus because again, that blockchain is longer. and all of those wallets in the blacklist would essentially become frozen. So a 51% attack, it can potentially be a very big problem. In fact, it could be the most financially devastating hack to ever take place in human history if it were to happen with a crypto like Bitcoin, whose market cap briefly touched $1 trillion. Uh, so obviously, if a hack like this were to take place, it would be all over the news and it would destroy people's trust in Bitcoin. The value of it would plummet immediately uh, and it would become it would probably become worthless in all honesty. Now, this attack is mostly theoretical um, because to actually pull it off would be very, very expensive. So you have pools like Sparkpool, for example, uh, which of course are many, many miners that are making up this pool. There's over 30,000 of them, uh, according to poolwatch.io, who are responsible collectively for a hash rate of just over 100 tera hashes per second. So to put that in perspective, if you personally wanted to just beat Sparkpool, which would still only give you 21% of uh, network control in the case of Ethereum, which isn't enough for you to do anything anyway, you would basically have to double their current hash rate. It would require about 1 million RTX 3090s. Uh, so you'd be looking at a few billion dollars just in the hardware cost because uh, they're rated like best case scenario for a 3090 is basically 150 mega hashes. Uh, so really you would need about 2 million of them to achieve uh, 52 percent in this case and then there's obviously the cost of electricity so you're looking at at least uh, two million dollars a day to power that many rtx 3090s uh, minimum and all of that would ultimately well all that would ultimately happen from this type of hack being pulled off is the death of that cryptocurrency so you you probably wouldn't get a chance to exploit this multiple times, you know, the moment. that There's so many people analyzing uh, the blockchains of Bitcoin and Ethereum that if something like that happened, it's going to be discovered immediately. Like I said, it's going to be in the news. It's going to cause it to crash um, because people won't have faith in a network where double spending can happen. So it's it's not really worth it for most people to do something like that but there are a couple of attackers that i could see trying to do something like this uh, and actually have something to gain one would be a large government uh, some type of global superpower who maybe feels that their own currency is threatened by bitcoin so the electricity cost the hardware cost and all of the money and manpower to set up something like this would be relatively easy for a government like the US or China to obtain. In fact, China is probably the most likely candidate for doing something like this since 81% of Bitcoin mining pools are already Chinese run and 65% of the mining hash rate. So we're talking like raw, you know, ASICs and GPUs that are just running and, and you know, doing this, uh, these calculation, 
65% of those rigs are run by Chinese miners. So all that the Chinese government really needs to do to convince the miners to crash the currency, uh, well, they just have to convince the miners that are already doing it to crash the currency uh, by engaging in those shenanigans that I just described. And it's also possible, well, it's less probable, but I guess possible for a very large corporation to try and pull this off. So a company like Apple, for example, has about $200 billion in cash on hand. So maybe if they decided to, uh, I guess, create their own cryptocurrency, you know, they want to do an ICO, they might see that it's worth it to try and kill off a uh, Bitcoin, right? They would have to wipe out all of their cash reserves and possibly liquidate part of their company to do that uh, and prop up their own currency. So again, it's kind of far-fetched, but it is possible for them to do it. Uh, but what can you do to try to prevent a 51% attack? Well, for one, uh, you can just mine crypto, right? So you might not uh, actually make money doing it, uh, because you have to factor in, you basically have to get really efficient as far as electricity costs and things like that. And then if you don't have the hardware already on hand or you don't have any other use for it, uh, it might be difficult for it to benefit you monetarily, but you can obviously mine to make it more difficult for the cryptocurrency to be taken over. You know, every GPU, CPU, or ASIC that mines any cryptocurrency just adds to the expense of somebody trying to take over that network. And also, don't join up with any pools that are getting close to having a majority of the network hash rate. Usually, if you go to sites like poolwatch.io, they'll flag that for you. Like if it's if it gets up to like 30%, if a single pool gets up to like 30%, usually they'll tell you, hey, don't join this pool. Um, because again, we don't want these networks, we want these networks to be as decentralized as possible. So we don't want any one person or pool or even a country to control the majority of the hash rate, which also means that you might just want to straight up boycott Chinese mining pools, uh, especially if you're looking to mine Ethereum or Bitcoin, because currently both of those currencies are centralized within Chinese borders.